Hi everyone, Kristen D. Francisco, Assistant Superintendent of Schools in Groton Dunstable. I'm happy to be talking with you today a little bit about student motivation and engagement. And not only did I want to give a little information about how teachers plan to engage and motivate students in school, but also wanted to talk about how you can do some of those things at home, specifically around helping students create SMART goals. And I'll start out by just talking about um, a couple of the things that we will be doing in schools or that you will you can see in classrooms that help students stay engaged and motivated. Uh, the first is to build inclusive learning communities. And teachers are work on that at the beginning of the year during what we call the first six weeks of school. And so as they're doing that, they're getting to know students, they're getting to understand how students learn best. They're learning to getting to know how students feel the safest, they feel supported, they feel like they belong. And they're also having a little bit of fun because those things can ensure that kids feel welcome in their community. Also talking about feedback loops. Uh, feedback loops different than just giving somebody feedback on something that they're doing. That loop actually helps them take the feedback, do something with it, get additional feedback and move on to the next step. So feedback loops are something we'll be using. And student learning targets. So student learning targets are, we take whatever goals have been um, set by in different curriculum areas by the Department of Education, um, and we make them student friendly. And we talk about something called um, what students will be able to do. And when we do that, we're engaging children because they actually understand what am I supposed to be able to do when I finish this lesson or this partner work. Um, so th those are three things that I will vlog a little bit more about later on in the school year. But right now, I wanted to talk to you about the fourth one, which is stu creating student goals. So when we talk about creating goals with students, um, we're talking about how we help them see the fruits of their labor and really want to be able to reach those goals. So when you when you talk to a student about a goal, you don't just want to have them create a goal. You actually want to have them plan out some action steps to that goal. And you can do this at home with kids. It is a tremendously helpful transferable skill. They can use it in any subject area. They can use it at home in their, um, when they're playing sports. They can use it at home when they're trying to, when you're trying to get them to do chores or keep their room clean or, you know, a, a littles can use it, bigs can use it. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the word SMART because you oftentimes hear that word SMART goal. A SMART goal is just an acronym that means specific. Your goal should be specific, should name exactly what you're going to do. It should be measurable. You should be able to see that you're making progress. It should be authentic. So it should be something that really matters. You know, you should, you should have a reason as to why you're working on this goal. It should be realistic. So you should actually be able to achieve it. You know, if my goal were to, I am going to, um, you know, climb Mount Everest, I'm not sure that that's gonna happen for me. Some people, yes, me, not so much. Uh, and your goal should also be time bound. Um, so you, you wanna make sure you're setting a goal that you can, you can achieve in a reasonable amount of time because a long amount of time to achieve a goal it gets frustrating, especially for littles. So when you're thinking about that with a, with, a, with a child, you're thinking about how do I get a specific enough goal? And I'm gonna give you one around um, chores at home. You know, if you're trying to ask your child to do chores, it's one thing to make a list on the refrigerator and check those things off. And that's very task oriented, but it's not necessarily setting them up to really see the success of their work. So if you were gonna be specific about your work with, with chores at home, you might say, um, I will complete three chores each week and here's a list of the chores that I can choose from. So now you've built in some choice um, and you've also put a number to it. So it's very specific. Um, when you're talking about measurable, um, you've got a number, you've got your three and you are also able to encourage your child to make a checklist. You're able to encourage your child to report to you at the end of the day. Um, you're, you encourage them to make, a, make an action plan. So when you're thinking about that actionable piece, 
you might have your child break it into smaller steps. So if I am making progress on my goal, I will be able to say that I emptied the dishwasher or I will be able to say that I cleaned my room. And you also might ask them to look at their schedule. Realistically, you've got this amount of time after school before homework. Tuesdays are a really busy day for you. So that shouldn't be a day that you're picking to do one of your three chores of the week. Wednesday is pretty open for you. That should be a day that you're picking picking a, um, to do a goal or to do one of your pieces after, um, after school, one of your chores. Um, and when you're thinking of time bound, it's within the week. Um, so this is just a very simple example, but what I am encouraging you to do is really think about how you are, if, if your child is struggling with something, um, if you just want to uh, encourage progress. And it is a really good activity to, on a Sunday or during a family time or whatever, you're all talking about a goal that you have, a SMART goal. Um, and hopefully they'll have heard that language in school and they'll be able to talk with you a little bit about what that SMART goal should look, feel, and sound like. Um, and if they can't, you can talk to them about it. So I'll be putting some resources here in News Bites under the vlog, uh, a planning sheet that will help you to do that if you like to write down pen and paper. But, you know, having a workout goal if you are... Um, an adult or a grown up, you can even have a workout goal as a, as a child. What is something that each person is working on and really carving out the time to share your success with each other um, and give each other feedback, uh, being a buddy and saying, hey, did you, did you, do, did you work on your SMART goal? Um, I think that as a family, when you work on these types of skills, they become embedded in your practice. And when you are up against something, you know, if you're working on these goals at a time when you're not stressed out, when, you know, it's to do something that is kind of helping you stay organized, then when you do bump up against something that's really hard and tricky, your, your children have had practice setting a goal. And so you can lean on that strategy when things get hard um, and say, well, you know what? It's worked for us to set goals when things are easy. I bet you it will work to set goals when things are hard, too. Um, so having that practice, having that habit of mind of what it means to set a goal, pick some small steps, move from that small steps to actually seeing some results. Wow. At the end of this week, I was really able to say I did my three chores um, or I was able to say I read this much in my book. Um, there's lots of different ways you can embed this goal practice and inside the template that you see um, attached to the news bites you'll see that there's some suggestions there to work on with kids. Um, and it's why it's why it's great is because again, it will work with the littles and it will work with all the way up through seniors um, in high school. And you'll probably find that their goals might be set around applying to colleges, um, getting into that common app and getting their things filled out. Um, so it, it, is, it is definitely something that is worth the time and worth the while. And I hope you try this out with your family. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me with any questions that you might have. And I appreciate you watching. Have a wonderful weekend.